Tony, good evening. Good evening, Nigel. Welcome. Um, it's a pretty ugly picture, isn't it? What's emerged over the course of the last few weeks, you know, now four, you know, pretty senior Premier League players, all in potentially very big trouble. Uh, now this police report about the big increase in arrests and violence. Tony, what's going wrong to the game you love? Yeah, I just listened to your list of crimes that you read out there, Nigel. And uh, yeah, I mean, listen, we've got to put our hands up in the football business. I've been in football now for 40 years. And, you know, when things go wrong, as they have done with the players that you've mentioned, with the, the rise in hooliganism as well, um, I think, you know, action needs to be taken. There's no doubt about that. But Nigel, you're old enough like me to remember the dark old days of the 70s and the 80s. And, you know, in terms of hooliganism, racism and all what was going wrong with football. And uh, there's been a lot of good work being done. And you, you, you cannot argue that football is not in a better place now than what it was 30, 40 years ago. So there's a lot of progress being made. Yeah. Having said that, you don't want to see what's been going on recently. I quite agree with you. I would have agreed with that, Tony. I would have, I would have agreed wholeheartedly with that. And the fact that Premier League um, matches are things that now people feel comfortable. You know, they have felt comfortable over the last decade or more, taking their kids to, um, you know, a feeling that it's a safe place to go and spend an enjoyable afternoon. And yet, when I came out of that tube train in Wembley on that Sunday, late Sunday afternoon last July for the Euro finals, we'd gone back 30 years and more, hadn't we? Yeah, and you can argue it's cost us a World Cup as well, Nigel, which yeah. we was going to be bidding for in 2030. We're now gone for the Euros in 2028. There was a lot of mistakes made. I didn't personally go to the game. I've seen all what went on. There was a lack of stewards, a lack of police. There was uh, individuals uh, behaving badly, drinking, taking drugs, etc. We all know what went on. And that is unacceptable, whether it's football or whether it's just in life in general. That is unacceptable. And if people make mistakes, Nigel, they've got to take responsibility, whether it's an individual or whether it's as a crowd. And I come back to my point, you know, my, yeah. my, my club, I'm a big West Ham fan. And I was yeah. at the game last night and I saw what went on. And, you know, and individuals and football clubs have to take responsibility sometimes. If I was a football sceptic, Tony, I would say, ah, this is a result of a bunch of young players being paid way, way too much money and the success and the fame and the money has gone to their heads and they think they can behave differently to all the rest of us. Well, money doesn't help, Nigel. I mean, I played in the in the, the good old days of the 80s and the 90s where we, we had a lot of fun and, yeah, we had a few drinks along the way, but we didn't get rewarded with the money we perhaps should have done. But now the players get in vast amounts of money, you know, in, in some cases 200, 300 grand a week. I, yeah. I cannot get my head around that sort of money. I don't think anyone can. But, you know, these players, it, 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 a lot of it's got to be about education. You've got to educate the players. You've got to try and warn them. But, you know, I, I, I challenge anyone to be an 18, 19, 20-year-old and all of a sudden you go from earning, say, £1,000 a week to £50,000 a week, you know, not to have your head turned and not to get into bad habits, you know. And that's where the club have got to put a protective arm around them. The likes of Mason Greenwood, who you, who you mentioned, you yeah. know, those players, they need goals. And going forward, you know, all these things that you've mentioned, we've got to learn the lessons. And, you know, footballers, it doesn't matter what sort of money you get, you should know how to treat a cat. Let's be quite honest about this. And, you know, and I, you know, I only watched the video, I've been honest with you, about an hour ago, and I was really, really disturbed with what I see. Um, I've got a cat myself, and even if I get angry with it, when it's up on the side licking my Sunday dinner, I get angry, but I'm never going <laughs> to kick the cat around the kitchen. I believe you. I, tell you, I believe you. Yeah. I really do.